Welcome to iLecture Online. Now we're ready to talk about the curl. Remember when we take the del operator and we multiply via the cross product to a vector, we end up with what we call the curl. Now what does the curl really mean? Now notice I drew two vector fields. They're both circular, they're both in the xy plane, and they both kind of circle the z-axis. Not kind of, they actually circle the z-axis. Notice that the magnitude of the, the vector field here is much smaller, the magnitude here is much larger. This will cause a much larger curl, this will cause a smaller curl. Still doesn't define what a curl is, but notice that by definition the curl is a vector, and notice that the vector is drawn here, which is along the z-axis, the vector is drawn along the z-axis, a larger vector here, a smaller vector there, so because the curl is a vector, with its direction perpendicular to the circular vector field. So notice since the circular vector field is in the xy plane, perpendicular is in the z-axis. Kind of using the right hand rule, you can curl your fingers in the direction of the vector field and your thumb will point in the direction of the curl. And that's the same for both of these. And notice that the magnitude indicates the tightness of the circular vector field. Hmm, what does that really mean, the tightness? Well, what it means is this. If you make a small change in either the x or the y direction, so if I go right here and I make a small change in the x direction, notice that there's not a lot of change in the direction and the magnitude of the vector field. So a small change in the x or y direction causes a small change in the vector field when you have a small curl. But in this particular case, if I make a small change in the x or y direction, since the magnitude of the vector field is much larger, it causes a much larger change in the vector field. Therefore, this causes a larger curl, this causes a smaller curl. Also, it could be that the vector field is closer into the origin, so that again, a small change in the x y direction causes a, a large change in the, in the vector field. And here, this could be far away, so therefore, we can say that a small change in the x y direction causes a small change. So either due to location or due to the strength of the field in the circular motion, when you then change x or y in the x or y direction, you have a large change in the vector field which then causes a large change in the curl. So the curl is simply an indication of how the vector field winds in the circular path and how much it changes when you make a small change in the x or y direction. Again, this is in the situation where the vector field is in the x y plane which causes the curl to be in the z direction. And you can find it by taking your fingers and curling them in the direction of the field and then your thumb will point in the direction of the curl. An obvious uh, example of this would be the magnetic field. You can have a magnetic field in a circular path in the xy plane and then you can see that the curl would then come out in the z direction. So we'll see some examples of that later. Uh, notice that this is the example where the vector field to the xy plane and then the curl will be in the z direction. So hopefully that gives us kind of a conceptual feel for what the curl is. Now we'll show you some examples of how to actually calculate the curl and that comes up in the, in the videos to come. Let's see, what do we have next? Hmm.